Assalamu alaikum, my name's Dual Cream, and today we'll be making a buster sword out of paper. This is my childhood dream, is to have a buster sword. These are the components. Now I would, normally I would do a video where I make the individual components every day and then put it together. But the thing is, is this bad boy here, it's taken me over two months. There's over a thousand pieces of paper. People are like, whoa, Abdul, a thousand pieces of paper. And I'll be like, yes. You know where I get a thousand pieces of paper from? Well, I get it from the fact that I used to own a business. And when we owned a business, we ordered 1,000 flyers. Uh, well, maybe about, I think 2,000 flyers or something like that. And the 2,000 flyers, we did nothing with them. We still got them. So I was like, okay, got to get to work, got to get cracker lacking with this. And yeah, we got to turn it into something. We're going to use this, all this paper into something. And then I thought, what's my childhood dream? And I remembered my childhood dream is to have a buster sword. So here we go. We're going to show you the individual pieces, how to put them together, and then how to actually make the final piece. So it's not actually complete. As you can see, it's just resting on top. But you see that duct tape there, it's my marker, I will show you what to do. Okay, so to begin with, we get a random piece of paper. It's just a plain piece of paper, a graph from the printer, right? I'm not going to use the one with the writing on it. And we do this. Right, we fold this bad boy in half, right? Actually, you got, it doesn't matter if it's neat, it really doesn't matter. So now you've got this. Now, you've got to close the barn doors. Right, you've got to fold it to the center. So you see that center line? You see that center line right there? That center line. You know, I'll do it this way so you guys can see it. Right, it's not going to bend correctly, but it's fine. I, I, I've done this many times before. Just trust me. So I just do it like this. And then I do the two edges. And then I do the center. And that usually does it perfectly. So then you do it again. Now what I do is I leave a little bit of a gap in the center. Why a little bit of a gap? It, it just helps you further down the line. When you're folding this thing, if the pieces overlap, then it becomes annoying. So then you do it again, and you think, okay, okay, I'm gonna wait there. So this is a stage two M piece. These are the larger M pieces that I'll be using later. Why I call them M? Because they look like an M. Like, mmm, goodness. But yeah, then you fold it again. This is the proper M, the, the small M. Now you may be thinking this looks a bit small, but all my pieces have this, all the major pieces have this. So we're gonna call this a stage two M, right? It's small, it's compressed, but it has goodness. And then you gather your pieces, and you have a ton of M's, right? A ton of small M pieces right there. So then, I've also got some I previously made, I bundled them together just for ease. These are the half M's, so we're gonna need these later. So, let's start stacking these emular goodness. Start stacking them like so. Actually, what you need, when you're doing this M's, firstly, you need the half M's, right? Why the half M's? Because when you begin stacking them, gonna put a half M in between. Why? Because it doubles the thickness. It's kind of a nice little trick to use less paper. So you make some half M's and it doubles that thickness. So now, instead of having a thickness of two, it's a thickness of three. So you do it again. Half M here. And then another piece. Every now and then push them down. Now here's where the half M pieces come together because if you just stack them end on end, it will just fall over. But you need 10 of these, why? Because we have to compensate for the half, half end pieces. So yeah, with 10 of these bad boys, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Ooh, I just grabbed this and it just happens to have 10. And you whack it back there, right. Reason for this is you create a jigsaw pattern of ins and outs. 
So let's try again. We've got to put five more, but with half pieces in between. To the original, slide it on top. Now here, where it is, here is where it gets really kafoodly, because you need to hold it, right? And you've got to make sure it slides underneath. Make sure it's all slid. So you've got five underneath. So that way it's always giving a piece of five out. Now we do five more on top, and then five more out, and then five more on top. Equaling a total 25. Okay, so this is how you do it. You have this piece and then this stack of five and you whack it on top. And you're starting to see that it's starting to take shape. Okay, so yeah, for the sake of time, we're just going to do that. Now normally it would be thicker than this, but just for the sake of time, we'll do this. Right? As you guys can see, it's getting there. Now, to this top piece I ran out of middle pieces, so don't worry about that. So then, you get a piece of paper and you wrap it all up. Just to keep this in shape, because if you hold it, trust me, it will hurt your hand after a few minutes. So there's the general shape of the thing. So yeah, there's the general shape of the thing. So now, you've got to put pieces in here and continue building onwards and upwards. Alright, so now, you got this, where it's starting to grow and it's starting to get bigger. And then you create these joints and slide the joints over the middle piece where it connects. Why do you have these joints? Well, otherwise you have to hold the whole thing. And then, you create that and just keep jointing it up with those uh, paper things. And eventually you'll end up with something that looks like this. This is the bottom half of, of the Buster Sword. This is the top. So this one has about 40 pieces in, the other one has about 25 to 30 pieces in. So then, you just kind of got to eyeball it. I'll give you guys a measurement of how big it is, how thick it is so far. So this piece is about 8.5 inches, and this piece, 5.5 inches. Why is the bottom piece smaller? Well, you'll see in a second. Okay, so we have the two pieces. Now we've got to do the central core of the buster saw, this baby right here. So this is the central core of the buster saw. It is going to be right down the spine of the buster saw. Now, I will admit that in the final product, the buster saw is supposed to have two holes in it, where the mat, uh, where the those balls and spheres that they use in Final Fantasy go, but. If I put two holes in it, it will just chew right through the center of this, and this is the spine of the whole thing. You need this thing's spine to be nice and strong. You need to hold the weight of the entire thing. So, how you make the spine? Well, let me show you. The spine is a different technique entirely. What you have to do, is so you have to get paper and put it in a very tight bun. So you get something tubular like so. Then, you have to get some paper, which is expected, and start putting it in. Then, you start sliding more paper in, until it gets full. You can see it's starting to fill up now already. That's right. So then, you slide even more paper in. And eventually, the uh, paper will begin to curl. Now what I do is I squeeze it in just before putting it down so that way it doesn't get this. But, but if you're sliding with your fingers here, warning, I'm gonna warn you guys, you need to be careful because you will get paper cuts. And sometimes the paper can cut this central bit too. So be careful. Do it slowly and just do it enough so it gets in there. Or you can do it like that, right? So now it's starting to fill up and it's starting to naturally curve, right? So you've got to continue this uh, pattern on. Now always do it from the, from the top. So put it in there, so you guys can see. Slide it down, and then what sometimes you can do is you can just squeeze it and then slide the paper up. And you see, now it's starting to curve. The bottom's starting to get more curved, and you can do this to kind of help it out. And as you do that, the top will curve too. So you notice in this, the top is curved. The whole thing becomes a cylinder. The whole thing becomes curved. 
So you just keep cramming paper in here. Now when it gets to the end, when you're starting to fill her up, I'm going to do it gently. I'm going to do it gently. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll reach in here and just pull. Ugh. Right, now you can squeeze to try and get the shape. I think this is as full as she'll go. You can see that she's become flat. When these two have become flat, you'll know the handle's ready. So, one thing that we haven't done, just to show you guys, I did this on purpose as a pro tip, but you can just select five down, and actually with the handle I did 10 down, and then you pull it out like so. Now it's very difficult to do it this way, but if you've forgotten, you can do it that way. And remember, paper cuts. So eventually, you end up with a finished product that looks a bit like this. You see out and ins. So then, you've got to take some of these uh, short ones and put them in the underside so it has strength all the way around. So then you slide it in the gap. This is just another way of doing it. I did this as an example. If you guys have started it and you've taped it all up and you've forgotten, you're like, oh damn, I forgot. You know, this is all an alternative method. It's not a good method, I wouldn't recommend it because it's a complete pain in the bum and it's so kafoodly. Like, this is the most kafoodly way of doing it. Then you've got to slide it in there again, which was hard enough the first time, and that way it ends up stable all the way around. Now, people ask me, do you want to use the half and whole method? That way it spaces out like on the main sword? No, with the handle you don't want to do that. The reason being is basically the handle has to hold the whole strength. So we need to make the handle as strong as possible. And be careful not to burst this guys, um, this bit guys, because you, you don't want to burst that. That's just not going to be fun times for anybody. If you burst that, you have to redo the whole thing. So yeah, then you got this bit, put it all into place. So the whole thing is solid, it's all round, and the more pieces you do, the more round it will get. Until eventually, you get to end the end bit like this. Now how do you finish it off? Well, you finish it off with those half pieces. As I said, they're important, but you fill in the half pieces here, here, until your end is blunt. And then what I did is I cut the tip. But I left these guys open because I wanted you guys to show how it looked. So this is how it looks in the end. You can see the end pieces. And I've cut the end so that way they are, there is slants. So yeah, you just slide them in to fill in the gaps. And then you end up with a nice solid end piece. Now, let's uh, tie it all together with electrical tape. Why electrical tape? Well, firstly it's not that expensive, but primarily electrical tape I chose because you can pull it off easily. So if you make a mistake, you can pull it off easily. How much will you need? Well, you're gonna need a long piece for this. Why? Because you've got to hold that strength in. This much, that's just over a foot of electrical goodness. Well, it's not electrical, but technical goodness. Then you've got to start. Any side is fine, but you've got to squeeze it. The moment you've got to do it, right? And you've always got to make sure that the tape is overlapping itself. Why? Because I found that the tape finds it easier to stick to itself. So, you've got to squeeze and twist. Now once you've got enough like this, it's fine if you don't squeeze as much, but I recommend to squeeze and twist as much as you can the whole way around. So there you have it. There's the end sorted. And then you basically just put electrical tape all the way around it until you get to the end. You've got to tie off the ends as hard as you can get. So there, we have the handle sorted. Right. So now we've got to deal with the heel of the sword. The hilt of the sword is cardboard. Why did I use cardboard? Well, I tried it with paper, honestly I did. But you know what happens if you glue a bunch of pieces of paper together? It's still soft and fluffy. It's like, still wiggles in the, you know, when you move it. And you need something that's, that's hard. This is not one piece of cardboard, no, this is three. There's a piece in the inside, you can probably make out, I don't want to open it up to show you. And this, I decided, would be the hilt. Now there's a review, um, there's a product review channel where you'll be seeing this product.
But uh, yeah, so with this uh, product, we're going to take our ridiculously sized ruler. <laughs> I, I had these in school when I was a kid, and I promised myself as an adult, when I, when I saw one, I'd just buy it. So I was in Dollarama, I saw it, and it just got into the cart. My wife gave me the look, I just smiled and nodded, and you know, now I have this ruler. So this uh, is 31.6 centimeters. I prefer to use uh, centimeters because it's more accurate. So 31.6 would be 16 and one half. So yeah, we're gonna measure 16 and one half right there. All right, so you can, you can see I already started with a, uh, a circle, but since we've re-registered it and done it properly, we're going to put this in the center of the circle, like so. You've just got to eyeball it. There you go. I'm going to put this deeply so I know it's the right one. Then we're going to cut that into a hole. doesn't matter if it's rough because it's going to help hold this onto this. Be careful not to get into this bit because that's the fold. Okay, right, so we have the hole. Now it's probably not going to fit the first time, but let's try anyway. Yeah, as I suspected, it's too, too small. So, one method you could do, you could try to expand it, or, well, let me actually expand this little bit here. So yeah, you just got to kind of um, the fugle it around a bit. Right, so as you guys can see, I've cut the things on there. And so that way, this little tiny flaps, it's hard to see, but you'll see it in a moment, because we're going to slide this into it. Right, now you guys can see the flaps are opening. You guys can see the flaps are opening. So then you've got to slide it across. Now, I did, unfortunately, do a little bit too loose, <laughs> but that's fine. It'll get sorted. So that marker, as I said, duct tape was the marker. All right, so there you go. That is the hilt of the buster sword. So now we've got to slide the pieces in together. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come together. We put this whole piece together. We put every aspect of this bad boy together. But as you can see, the pieces are ready. So let's put them all together. We have all the pieces together like so. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to tape the whole bloody thing together. Because this whole piece needs to be taped together strongly and firmly. How are we going to tape it? Using duct tape. Why duct tape? Because it's strong and it will do the job. Now, we're going to begin by pushing this off the edge. Why? Because it's easier to manage. Yeah, let's get a better camera angle on this. Okay, so we're gonna hit the tip. We're gonna push this up underneath and squish this together as much as we can. So you guys can see the blade is starting to be held together. Let's do the back end. Now we're gonna open this up. Make sure these two pieces are flat. You've got to keep rechecking this because these can slip. You're gonna put this off the edge. This DIY manual to keep the front end in place because we don't want it slipping. So we're going to pull this back a bit and we're going to tape these three together. Now technically I could say sod it, it's done, we've done it. But no, we haven't done the uh, buster sword properly. We need to double insure it. So I'm going to put four more pieces of tape all across this bad boy right here. So now we've got this thing four times held together with that. So there we have it. Five feet of bustery goodness. It's all made of paper and cardboard technically is paper. People will be like, that's not paper, it is. Cardboard biotechnicality is paper. Uh, we have to put the finishing touches. Now I'm just going to finish with this. This, uh, this hilt, you might notice it's larger than the blade. 
Why? Because the hilt of a buster sword is a box. So we need to boxify this hilt. Alright, so let's just finish this off. This hilt. Okay, so to boxify this hilt, I'm not sure if boxify is the official terminology, but we're going to need to make a measurement, but only on this side. Why? Because this is the longer side, and we need to know how many centimeters, which is exactly seven, that we need to do the fold on the other side. So it's exactly seven. I'm going to measure seven here. I'm going to do seven again. Why? Because this still doesn't have the blade attached. The blade will be in part two. So, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to begin by cutting down the spine till it reaches till it reaches there. Right? Don't matter. It doesn't matter that I've overcut. So now let's do the other one. As you ladies and gentlemen can see, right. there's two cuts there. Okay, so we're going to fold it inwards, beginning with this piece first. We're going to fold it until it's on this. I'll open up so you guys can see it'll be like that. Then we're going to tape it on the inside. Right, so you can see it's taped down on the inside right there. Yeah, so now we are going to fold this in half. Why in half? Because I thought it'd be long enough but it's not. So now, we're going to fold that onto the side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice little fold here. So there you go, it kind of creates more of a box shape. And we're going to tape that into place. And then you do the same on the other side. Just kind of eyeball which is about halfway. Right there. And then you just got to fold this over. So it creates a nice neat little box on both sides. So there we have it, the nice little squared off corner. Now we've got to do it again on this side. But remember, we haven't put the blade in, so we have to measure where the blade length is going to be. Oh, this is nice and easy. It's just down this line. Right, there's actually a nice little line there. So we're going to make our cuts and get doing on this. Okay, so as you can see, it's completely squ squared off and there's a gap under here. This is where the blade is going to be slid into place. So, we got this thing complete, but this, uh, this hill is still a bit loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to put tape behind here and it'll be complete. There you go. Now it's complete, so you can see the final handiwork. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Uh, we're going to be continuing and finishing this off. Now, some eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that this is actually the second upload of pretty much the same video. The original has been deleted. It actually showed my face, but it was online for what, like less than a day? So, yeah, I got rid of that real quick. So, we're showing you how to finish off the blade here. I was going to go with something real kafoodly, but I decided to go with this. So we're going with a big M, and what you do is you basically just do this with it, and then just tape it in. So it just kind of fills it up, and you can see if you look real close, there's multiple. So you just basically get a bunch of these, stack them on top of each other, and then, um, yeah, then basically you're just good to go with that. This thing, at so far, is huge. I mean, this is a massive piece of kafudament. Uh, I don't know the technical term, but yeah, kafudament is where we're going to go with. And so yeah, you can see I got five, uh, two of these. We stack them together and we just taped it. It's the easiest thing to do. I had something in mind, um, to be honest. But yeah, this was way easier to do it this way. Now you can see the blade is slightly bending. Um, this was completed a year ago. And in fact, I shot the original video a year ago. Uh, so yeah, this is the original, what, sorry, the new blade. I mean, look at that, that's huge. To give perspective, this is me, and it's up to my chest. Like, seriously, this is a massive 
massive kafoodliness. Look at that. Look at that. That's just too massive. This is just way too massive. Yeah. I mean, this is the biggest thing. I did notice that after a while, this tends to bend here. I don't know if you can see it. I can barely lift it. You know, if if this was, if you had the real bastard sword from Final Fantasy VII in real life, it would be impossible to lift by one hand. Like, like Cloud in Final Fantasy VII wields it with one hand. Uh, th this thing is impossible. I think that with the hilt, we would just get like one of those bamboos, uh, the thick bamboos, and just run it down the center. It's the only way. You can see I put extra support in the side there. Um, so yeah, there's nothing much I can do with this to make it any better. It looks as cool as I can get it. Uh, I know some people were like, it needs to be better. I'm like, I'm sorry, this is the best I can do. Anyway, I will make a samurai sword out of paper. Hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to su hit subscribe. Remember to leave a comment in the section down below. But yeah, this is a huge, huge hot damn piece of monstrosity that took me several months to build yeah and if you guys uh, if you guys saw my face in the video again I shot the original like a year ago but yeah thanks for watching I hope you guys found this entertaining uh, if you want to buy some paper I guess there's a link somewhere down there I don't know this is weird hey if you guys want to buy this I'm gonna sell it for like what an insane figure like 12 billion dollars <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever sell it. It'll probably just live on in my closet. One day someone will come into my house and they'll look in my closet and be like, Hey, are you completely random with you? And we're like, bruvs for days. And they're like, that's not really an answer. Just answer my damn question. And we're like, leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.